All right, we're going to solve this initial Fourier problem by using the Laplace transform. So right here, let's go ahead and take the original Laplace throughout this equation. First of all, we have to do the Laplace transform of the second derivative. And you have to remember this is equal to s squared times y of s. And you see, I will put down the s in red. So this is not a 5, right? And we have to continue. And we will have minus s times y of 0, which is times 1, right? So this is y of 0 right here. And then we have to minus y prime of 0, which is 2. So I'll just put down minus 2, and then indicate this is just y prime of 0. And this right here is for the y double prime. And then we will have the plus 4y, and you have to do a lot plus for that as well. Let me just emphasize that for this, we will just get plus 4, and the Laplace transform of the y is just capital Y of s, like that, all right? And then we will have to do the Laplace transform of the t, which is going to give us 1 over s squared. So let me put that down right here. So this is what we have. And the deal is that on the left-hand side, we have to isolate the y of s, and then put everything else onto the other side. So as we can see, we have the y of s here, and here, and let me just put it down as s squared plus 4 right here. And then we will factor out the uh, y of s right here. And let me write this down, 1 over s squared. And I'll put this to the other side, so it will be plus s. And then put a 2 on the other side, so we have plus 2, like that. Okay. Here, we have to add the fractions up. So of course, let's go ahead and get the common denominator. So right here, I'll just go ahead and multiply this by s squared top and bottom. And likewise, multiply this by s squared top and bottom. And let me just work this out for you guys. You will see the denominator is just going to be s squared. Oh, s should be in red right here. Okay, let me just emphasize. This is an s, and then we have the square. And then on the top, let me put down s times s to a second power, which is s to a third power first right here, right? So we have s to the third power from here. And then plus 2s squared, plus 2s squared, and then plus 1, like that. Okay, as you know, this is the result for all this, and I want to isolate well of s, namely I will just have to divide this on both sides. So this part will go to a denominator, so let me put that down right here s squared plus 4, like this. And now the left-hand side is just y of s. This is it, right? That's so wonderful. We get the y of s by itself. And now, what we have to do next is, we just have to do the inverse Laplace on both sides, right? So the idea is, let's go ahead and do the inverse Laplace right here, and also do it right here as well. So that you end up with y of t, and that will be the solution to this initial for your problem. But as you can see, this is the harder part, because we will have to do the <laughs> partial fractions to break this apart, and then do the inverse Laplace transform. Well, with that being said, we will just do this on the, <laughs> on the side here, right? So let me write this down right here for you guys. I will do this in blue and red. We have to look at s to the third power, and then we have the plus 2s squared plus 1 over, you see, this s squared means s times s. So keep that in mind. This is a repeated root. And this part, s squared plus 4, we cannot factor it. And it has complex root, so keep that in mind as well. But let me just write it down as how it is for now, right here. Well, with that being said, I'm going to break this apart. This is going to be, this is how you can do it first. So, to show you, you are going to end up with s on the bottom first, and then plus something over s squared, and then plus something over that, s to the second power plus 4. This is how you construct the partial fractions form right here. Once again, this is s to the second power, meaning s times s. When you set it up, be sure you build out the powers, namely s to the first power first, and then s squared. And this quadratic factor gets its own fraction right here. And on the top, we'll just have a constant here, another constant here, and then this right here has to be a linear term. Namely, we'll just put down Cs plus D. Okay, 
Let me just take about like 20 seconds or so to explain why it has to be like this way. Why not? Why didn't we do s squared plus s squared plus 4? Here is a, a thing. If you put down quadratic factor in the denominator, on the top it should be a linear. So in this case, you can just put down a s plus b right here. And this is also going to be linear, namely it will be c s plus d, isn't it? Look at this. You see, we can split the fraction, namely we get a s over s squared, and then we add it with b over s squared. And check this out. A s, this s, and then the s squared cancel out, so you can just get rid of one of them. So then that's a over s right here, <laughs> and then b over s squared right here. So remember the setup, it's like this, all right? I don't know if that took uh, more than 20 seconds, but hope you guys see why this has to be this way for partial fractions purpose, all right? All right, now we can do cover up to solve for one letter A, B, C, or D. We can solve for B with the cover up method because we have the denominator S squared, which matches exactly right here. This is how we're gonna do it. To solve for B, I'm going to come here, I will cover that up. Well, I cover up the s squared with the same denominator. And we have to ask ourselves, how can we make this factor equal to zero? Well, we just have to plug in s equal to zero, right? And plug in zero into here, here, and here. On the top, you see zero to the third power plus two times zero squared plus one. We just have a one on the top, right? So you know b is going to be one on the top over and then we're plugging 0 into here, 0 squared plus 4, we get 4. So we get b is equal to 1 over 4 right away. Okay, so <laughs> we can use the cover up right here. That's pretty nice. However, uh, we still have to solve for a, c, and d. And perhaps this is a quicker way. One of the ways is that you can just plug in s is equal to 1 and then work out an uh, equation with a, c, and d and then s is equal to another number, s is equal to another number, and then build up three equations with three unknowns. Um, typically, we can also do this. Let's go ahead and multiply everything by the denominator, which is s squared times s squared plus 4. All right? We will clear the fractions, and then we'll do algebra, and then we will match coefficients. In this case, it's easier because we still have three variables, like the three constants A, C, and D that we don't know. So this is actually easier and quicker. Anyway, you take this times that, we just have the top, right? So let me write that down. We have S, third power plus two S squared plus one. And then this is going to give us S, and one of the S will cancel out. So we will get A, S, and then that, which is S squared plus four. And then, this times that, the s squared will cancel out, so we have the 1 over 4. Let me put out plus 1 over 4 times this, s squared plus 4. And then this times that, well, the s plus 4 will cancel out, so we just have plus cs plus d times s squared, right? Just like that. And now, on the right-hand side, we're just going to multiply things out and then combine terms, and then we will match coefficients. So right here, as we can see, a s times s squared is going to give us a s to the third power. a s times 4 is going to be plus 4 a s. And then right here, it's going to be plus 1 over 4 times that, which is, uh, let me put it down as 1 over 4 s squared, and then 1 over 4 times 4 is plus 1. And at the end, we have plus, this times that is c s to the third power plus d s squared. And once again, the s are in red. There's no 5, all right? And that's combined terms. So for the s to a third power term, as we can see, we have this and that. So in another word, we must have a plus c, and then we have the s to the third power at the end like this. And then for the s squared term, we have this right here. So let me just do like this and that, then let me write down plus 1 over 4 plus d, and then we have the s squared at the end, like this. And then the term right here, we have the 
as. And uh, let me just do like this. Let me do like this. I just by itself pretty much. Plus four as. And then at the end we have this one. So let me do the one like this. <laughs> Plus one. Right? Okay. On the left hand side we have this. On the right hand side we have that match coefficients. As you can see, a plus c has to be this one. Right? That's a coefficient in front of the uh, s to a third power. So first thing, we must have a plus c equals to 1. And then next, we must have 1 over 4 plus d, which is the coefficient right here, for the s squared, and we shall get 2. So let me just do triple lines like that. So 1 over 4 plus d has to be 2. And then, well, as we can see right here, let's do like this. 4 a s, but there's no s term. So in another word, 4 a has to be 0, because we didn't have any s term, right? At the end, 1, of course, is equal to 1, so that's good. Anyway, right here, as we can see from this equation, we can say a has to be 0. And then from this equation, we can say that d is equal to, that's minus 1 over 4 on both sides. 2 is the same as 8 over 4. 8 over 4 minus 1 over 4, we get 7 over 4. And then, because a is equal to 0, plug into here, that means c has to be 1, right? So, these are the constants. And I can come back to here, I'll tell you a is 0, and then c is equal to 1, and then d is equal to 7 over 4, like that. Alright, so, uh, hopefully you guys feel a sense of accomplishment, like that. Anyway, on the left hand side, we will get y of t, so let me put that down. And this is going to be the solution, right? So, right here, we are just going to put this down, and we'll break it apart as well. So, this is going to be, this term is just 0, so we don't have to take of that, right? I will put this down. And let me put down the 1 over 4 to the front, and then we'll look at the inverse Laplace of 1 over s squared. So, 1 over 4, and then we have the inverse Laplace of 1 over s squared. This right here is from here, okay? And for this, let me just break the fractions apart. 1 times s over s squared plus 2 squared, right? So, we have to add it with the inverse Laplace. As I said, it's 1s over s squared plus 2 squared. So let's just put that down. 1 over s squared plus 2 squared. Yeah, you know why I want to look at the full as 2 squared, isn't it? And the last part is 7 over 4. Let's put that to the front. So we have plus 7 over 4. And then we have the inverse Laplace. And then we will just have a 1, isn't it? 1 over. Let me just erase this a little bit. 1 over, and let me not put on the 1 yet. Well, you could actually. s squared plus 2 squared, like that. Okay? This is what we have. And now, y of t will be, let's do this. 1 over 4 is just 1 over 4. If you look at 1 over s squared, this is what? The Laplace of t will give us 1 over s squared, right? So that means the inverse uh, Laplace of 1 over s squared it is just going to be t to the first power. You can look at that too as 1 plus 1, and the 1 match with that 1 on top, so it's just t to the first power, and that's it. For this right here, uh, oh sorry, this right here should be 1 times s, right? 1 times s, so this on the top should be an s. Right, so this is s over s squared plus 2 squared, and this right here is about cosine. We will have plus cosine bt. b in this case is 2, so we have cosine of 2t, like that. And once again, on the top, you should have an s, because 1 times s, right here. And this part, well, this time it is a constant because we took out the 7 over 4 in the front, so we have a 1 on the top, right? 1 over s squared plus 2 squared, you know, because this is the 2, I'm going to multiply a 2 on the top, but be sure you also divide that 2. So I'll put this down right here, divided by 2, like that, right? So, 
you will see it is going to be plus 7 over 8. And this right here, 2 over s squared plus 2 squared, is going to give us sine of 2t. So let's put on a 2 in blue, and then this is what we have. That's it.